Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about this silver foil found on some of the early 360 GPU heatsinks. Now people have been saying almost since launch that this is a mistake made by Microsoft. They forgot to remove the foil from the thermal paste. Well, I'm here to tell you that no is not true. This is not a mistake, and I'll explain why this was initially there and why it disappeared on the later heat sinks. So, if you were to peel off this protective foil, you would see something pretty much that looks like this, except it probably would not look as dispersed since uh, the foil has been keeping the shape more, right? As you can kind of see here from the imprint of the dies. And what this is, this is not thermal paste. This is called a phase change pad. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that the commercial thermal pastes that are used in the production of consumer electronics has a lot more requirements than the aftermarket stuff that you might buy for your gaming PC, like the Arctic Silver or the Arctic MX4 or any of those pastes. So before those pastes, those commercial quality pastes were of sufficient quality for high TDP situations, what they would do is use phase change pads, and you'll find these in all kinds of electronics from the early 2000s, and uh, probably before as well. And uh, this specific type here is called Thermflow T557, and this one is called Thermflow T558. And the T557 was also used on the CPU, as you can see. So you might be wondering why does the T558 get used for the early GPUs, and why did they switch to the T557? Well, first, let's really look at what this is. So if we go up here, here is the uh, document here for these pads. And you can see that if we read this here, that the T558 is the same phase change material as T557, which has been coded on one side with the metal foil carrier. Okay? So, you can see here that A, the foil eliminates the need for protective liner, but this is actually not the reason why this was used. Okay? Now, what you'll know about the phase change pads is you can see that when the temperature goes above 65C, the pad essentially reflows into the shape of the dies. And this creates a strong seal between the heat sink and the die closing any gaps. And that's why if you look at this, you can see the imprint of the die and even some of the text there on the heatsink and any excess has simply squeezed away. Same really is true for the CPU heatsink there. If we look at this one, however, you can see that the same imprint is made through the foil onto the phase change material. So this leaves the question, well, why was this used in the first place? Well, actually, there's a fairly simple answer for that. The GPU is a dual die design. Let me go get a GPU. Here is a GPU. And what I want you to understand is that when you're creating a multi-chip module like this, there's always going to be small differences in the heights of the dies. Okay? So in order to work around this, typically what's done is the higher TDP die is it going to be the one that's intentionally slightly taller? And that's exactly what Microsoft did here. This main GPU die is taller than the EDRAM die by just a tiny amount because this chip puts out a lot more heat than this chip does. So, the thermal interface material has a bigger gap to fill on the EDRAM than it does the main die. And you can kind of tell if you look at this foil very carefully that this is the case. So, the advantage of the T558 is that it adapts better to these height differences. So, that is why it was originally used for the GPU. So now, why did it change to this? Well, I can actually answer that. This is a modification that Microsoft very briefly did to the motherboard where they applied two small bits of Kapton tape here. And the reason why was that at some vendors, this material was not applied very well, and the silver would start to come down here, and it would touch these capacitors and cause a short circuit. 
So this was an interim solution simply by putting a little piece of high temperature polyamide tape here on the chip to prevent that from happening. However, the ultimate solution is that they ended up reverting to the T557. So, now you know this was not a mistake, it was an intentional engineering decision, and then over iteration, they realized there was a small issue with the way that some manufacturers were applying it, and came up with a solution that lasted through the end of the Tonasket consoles throughout the rest of the FAT series. So I hope that this clarifies this, and if you have any questions, let me know below. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.